Welcome to the next episode of Feltovich Fit, The Naked Core. If you don't want to hear me talk and you just want to start training, that's fine. Feel free to skip to the time below. In this episode, we're going to build on the previous episode, Core 101, the Stu McGill Big Three, and we're going to do some more advanced core strength and stability work. It's called The Naked Core because I don't use any equipment in this workout. Equipment has its place, but you can do a lot without any equipment and you might not always have access to equipment. I'm not going to get into a lot of exercise theory because if you watched Core 101 and read the accompanying PDF, then you already know all the theory. Advanced just means that we're doing one or more of the following. Adding more complex stabilization patterns, adding additional resistance requirements, or adding additional proprioceptive or balance requirements. So instead of repeating the theory I explained in Core 101, I'm just going to explain the exercises and then we're going to do a workout. It's going to be 16 exercises done for 30 seconds each with 10 seconds rest in between for about 10 and a half minutes of near continuous work. So in addition to not needing any equipment, I'm also going to show you that you don't need a lot of time. The first exercise is plank, which we also do in core 101. So here I'll just reinforce a few key teaching points. I want to make sure that your hands are about shoulder width apart. You want to depress the index finger of each hand into the ground and you want to make sure that those shoulders are away from the ears. Also, you want to make sure that that torso is in line with the legs so your body is forming a straight line. You don't want your back to hammock and you also don't want to pipe your butt up in the air. Last, if you have hand injuries, wrist injuries, or if you just prefer, you can also do this exercise from your elbows as we discuss in Core 101. Next exercise is side plank, also from Core 101. In Core 101, we discuss several progression and regression options. Here I'm doing the, the starfish variation. With all your side plank variations, a key point to remember is that your torso is perp perpendicular to the ground. So one cue I like to give students is I tell them, pretend that your torso is sandwiched tightly between two panes of glass. Also, if you're doing the starfish variation, a key uh, cue to make sure that you're doing the movement right, doing the position right, is to make sure that that top foot is parallel to the ground. Third exercise, also from Core 101, is bird dog. A few key teaching points to remember with bird dog. One, keep those shoulders and hips parallel to the ground. Two, keep both sets of toes pointed to the ground. And three, and maybe most important, is keep those the leg and the arm straight. Common mistake that people make with this exercise is they try to elevate their arm and their leg as high as possible. That's not important. What is important is keeping that arm and, the, and leg straight. So instead of thinking high, think straight and long. Next act exercise is the front neck bridge. This is especially important if you do contact sports, you want to build a strong stable neck. I think of the neck as an extension of the core. If you're going to be doing contact sports, you're going to often need to stabilize the neck and the core is a unit, so that's why we work them out as a unit. That's why this exercise is preferable to say, you know, neck machines where you're working the neck in isolation. If this is too challenging for you, a regression option is you can do this exercise leaning against a wall. Other than that, it really is as simple as it looks. You're just gonna tripod on your feet and your head. Next exercise is the back neck bridge. Very similar to the front neck bridge, except you're doing it from your back, hence the name. All you're doing is placing the crown of your head and your feet on the ground, and then you're tripoding again on your feet and your head. Feet about hips width apart, uh, torso in line with the legs, so you're not hammocking your back, you're not overarching your back. As with the front neck bridge, regression option, you can do this leaning against the wall. Otherwise, it really is as simple as it looks. The next exercise is my take on the yoga pose scorpion. I love this exercise. I think it's the mother of all posterior chain activation exercises. It's going to light up your spinal erectors, your glutes, your hamstrings, and get them firing as a unit, which is what you want with core stability exercises. To do this exercise, you're going to put your hands together like you're going to bump a volleyball. Then you're going to lie in the prone position. Then with your ankles together, you're going to try to, and your legs straight, you're going to try to elevate your feet as high as possible. If spinal extension is at all contraindicated to you, to you that is your doctor, 
told you to avoid uh, lumbar extension or it otherwise causes you pain or discomfort, don't do this exercise. Otherwise, I think it's a great exercise and far superior to the overrated Superman. That is, it gives you a lot more posterior chain activation with a lot less lumbar compression. The next exercise is one arm plank, which we're not gonna spend a lot of time on because if you already know how to do a plank, then you already know how to do a one arm plank. It's easy, just take away one arm. The challenge with all plank progressions, and again, progression just means make more difficult, is that you wanna maintain the shoulders and the hips parallel to the ground and you wanna maintain the torso in line with the legs. So if you're progressing to a more challenging plank variation and you find that you have trouble doing those two things, keeping the shoulders and the hips parallel to the ground or keeping the torso in line with the legs, then that probably means that you're not ready for the progression and you need to regress back to a less challenging variation. Next exercise is called fire hydrant. I call it fire hydrant because it kind of looks like a dog doing its business on a fire hydrant. A few key teaching points to remember here is one, keep your hips and your shoulders parallel to the ground. I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but that's a pretty common theme with core stability exercises. You wanna keep your legs straight. You want your leg to be parallel to the ground, perpendicular to your body. A common teaching cue that I use for students is you wanna to try to touch your foot to your shoulder. Of course, it won't actually get there, but that cue, uh, trying to touch your foot to your shoulder will help you usually help improve form. A common mistake people make is they, is they uh, let their leg lag behind them instead of uh, keeping it perpendicular, perpendicular to their body. So it kind of starts to look like bird dog at that point. Uh, regression option is you can do it with a knee bent. A progression option that is make harder is you can do this from the plank position. And a further progression is you can do it from a plank position with one arm called awkward airplane. I don't demonstrate it in this video, but I do. I can provide a picture. The next exercise is kickstands. It's a side plank variation. Here, all you're going to do is you're going to elevate your bottom leg. You're gonna hold it parallel to the ground, perpendicular to your body. Otherwise, all the same side plank principles apply. A regression option here is that you can rest that front, that bottom leg on the ground. And what that's, um, that's where the term kickstand comes from. This is going to work all the same muscles as a side plank with more emphasis on the adductor muscles or the groin. The last exercise is the one-legged glute bridge. For this exercise, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your heels in towards your butt, close enough to touch, and then you're gonna push the heel of one foot in the ground while you elevate the other leg straight in the air. A couple teaching points to remember, cues I like to use with students is one, uh, try to elevate the hips as high as you can, so don't let those hips sag. The other teaching cue that I like to use is pretend that you're balancing an imaginary wine glass on, on your foot. That's enough talking, it's time to train.
Nick, I need a second to catch my breath. That was the Naked Core. The reason that I did the Naked Core in the first in my core series is that I want to show you that you don't need equipment. So we just got a phenomenal core workout with no equipment in very little time. I do this kind of exercise a lot. I like to think that I'm in good shape, but I'm smoked right now. That's about all I can handle. So thank you much for joining me today. Please leave any uh, questions, comments you have in the comments section. Thank you very much.